take away the stone. Take away the stone. Will be Yo, what's up? What's up? Blessings. <laughs> God bless. Hey. Hey, man, sis. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna connect back to you with that revelation. tell you with the Lord, because I, I was thinking about bears you feel me like the Lord was I don't know why it was a bear I was thinking about bears and then that same day one of my brothers he was he was talking to me about a dream he had about bears and he said that he was in the woods and he was challenging these bears and they couldn't touch them there's nothing they could do to them two different bears so I was it's a blessing because I, I know prophetically in the prophetic um, timeline of God that in the story of Daniel that bears represent Russia and I, I mean I heard that interpretation that first thing that came up the second thing that came to me that's a blessing and the second thing that came to me was racism so I just wanted to pick your spirit about it see what you got but it's, un it's funny how I got racism. We both got Russia and ra I got racism, but you got the economy. But I, I believe that racism is really hatred, which connects to Russia because Russia believed that they're a superior nation than everybody. Like they got the air of superiority, which obviously stems into a hatred of anything, anybody that's not like them, which is racism. And if you think about the economy, we know that Racism is closely connected to the economy, like. Exactly, like. You know what I'm saying? And, and we know that racism is built into our economy. We got three different classes. We know that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of decisions based on, made in the economy, a system, exactly. A system is based to, you know, validate the superiors, like, you know, the elitists. So we know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's interesting about a bear, like. But I was also thinking about Russia attacking. So I was just I was just asking because, you know, part of the prophetic is processing everything that's going on in the spirit and bringing it into a message. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's how that's the prophetic it is. So, you know, I was I was ministering to somebody. And I saw a picture of them praying on the bed and Jesus standing next to them. And then I heard these words, anger and frustration. Then, you know what I'm saying? Then I got to put it all together as one revelation. Like, <sighs> So anyway, praise God, everybody. I just want to revelate for a little bit. You know, if, if it pleases you to listen to the man of God, I pray and encourage, I pray and inspire you. Like... <clears throat> I don't know if I sound clear or not, cause I, when I talk in the car, I always feel like I gotta raise my voice for you to hear me, like, um, cause I'm driving and it's loud around me. So I pray if you can hear me, give me some hearts or something. If I sound clear, if, if the picture is distorted or not, just give me an indication so I can know, like, amen. So I wanted to talk to you guys. <clears throat> about functioning like God functioning like God now this rever if, if if you a religious type then this is not for you like you know if you're a religious person you know you go to church all the time and you, you know you're satisfied with that dimension of just going to church hearing the pastor if, if that, if that's where you at, praise God. I'm not knocking you. But this type of revelation will not be for you. Like This type of revelation is not for the religious. This type of revelation is only for believers. What I'm about to share with you is not for the regular church person. Even though it is for them. They don't know it's for them. 
but this revelation that I'm about to share with you is for sons. You know what I mean? This revelation is for sons. <clears throat> okay. You know, when Jesus came, his purpose was not to, to create a religion called Christianity. Praise God. I don't want to mix up these revelations. There's so much revelation. Like, the Lord was teaching me something like, you can't not be religious. Like, that's impossible. Everybody is religious. So when I talk about being religious, I'm, I mean more so, you more stick to the form and fashion and traditions more than you experience the power and the flow of the Spirit. So that's what I, when I say religious, that's what I mean. But we, every person in the world is religious. And everybody has to have a religion. You can't not be religious. It's impossible. Because, and this is what the Lord was showing me. The reason that you, you we, every person, because this is what the Lord had me think about. Why are people religious? Why, why can people control people with religion? Why can people manipulate people using religion? What is so powerful about religion? And then the Lord asked me, why do you think people are drawn to religion? And when he, when he asked me that question, it provoked me to really think, why are people so drawn to religion? And this is what he taught me, that religion is basically the institution that is designed to feed your spirit. So just as sure as every person has a spiritual aspect to themselves, just as sure as every person has a spiritual part of their being, they're going to gravitate to a, to a form of a religious system because you're always going to gravitate some, to something that can feed you spiritually. So that's what religion, and instead of us trying to say we not religious, let's just set up a pure religion like James said. James said pure religion is this. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to purify the institutions that was that are designed to feed your spirit. Okay? So <laughs> I just a little did a little sample. So when Jesus came, you know, he he didn't really come to start Christianity. He came to make his people free. He came to instruct and reveal to people the nature of God, the nature of Father God, you know. This is what he, he came to teach people about the kingdom of God. He came to restore that which is lost. Okay. Now, one of the things that was lost was the identity of man. Man sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So when man sinned, that means that they transgressed what God had instructed them to do or instructed them to walk in. And in doing that, they actually fell short or operated at a lower level than what God positioned them to function in, the glory of God, the spirit of God. The dimension of being one with God. They fell short and they begin to operate at a lower level. They begin to operate at the level of knowledge. Knowledge and senses. So then they became carnal. You know, their spiritual senses were not discerned or sharpened. They became dull of hearing in the spirit. And they based everything in their world based on knowledge and senses. Okay? So Jesus came to restore that back, you know, the dimension of being one with God, of walking in the spirit, the dimension of not only walking in the glory of God, but being the glory of God. First Corinthians chapter 11 says this, that man is the image and glory of God. So the glory is the expression of a person, like it's the express image of a person. So when we talk about the glory of God, we're talking about the ways that God expresses himself. 
You know, Jesus is the, the Hebrew said that Jesus is the glory of God, the express image of his person. So the glory is how God expresses himself, how God manifests himself. God said, I'm a healer. So the glory of God will actually see healings happen. God said, I'm, I, I'm the resurrection and the life. So the glory of God will actually will be coming into a place to actually see God express himself that way. But God said that man is the glory of God. So man, mankind is supposed to express something about God. We are supposed to be a witness in the earth realm of who God is, of the authority of God, the dominion of God and his kingdom. Okay? But we fell short of that and we and we lost the ability to operate in that dimension to not only function with God but to function as God. Okay? To function as God. Okay? Now, the Bible says that as many as believe in Jesus, Jesus is an illustration of who we are. Jesus is the first man, like, he is the first man. He didn't become a man when he walked the earth. He is the first man. Even after he died, they still call him a man. Like, even Jesus in heaven before he ever came to the earth, Daniel called him the son of man. Okay? So, the reason it's hard for us to embrace that, because we don't know what a real man is. Because we identify and we define man by the fallen nature of man. But Jesus is exactly what a man looked like. Jesus is an image of God. That's what a real man looks like. A real man looks like God. Because a real man is a son of God. And to be a son of God means that you're one that has the character and nature of God. Second Peter chapter one says that we are partakers of the divine nature. So that means when I come into Christ, Jesus empowers me to be a son or one that is a partaker of the divine nature. That means that there's an aspect of me that is divine in nature. That means that there's an aspect of me that is God. That is God. Now the reason it's hard for us to identify because we understand God as a mystical being. The word God, when you apply the word God to something, you're, you're applying that it's an unseen being or power that is greater than us. That's why we call idols gods. That's why we call money God. Because it's an unseen power. It's, a, it's a, a power that's not understood why it's powerful. That's greater than us. Money is a power greater than our own willpower. Because a lot of people will bend towards money. They'll, they'll, they'll change their will. They'll change their morality for money. So we call God because it, it's a mystical power that is greater than us. Okay? That's why people call angels gods. That's why we call God God because he's mystical. You, don't, you can't understand him. You can't see him, but you know he's real. And you know he's a million times greater than us. But Jesus never called him God. We identify him as God because he's... He's a being that is unknown to us. But Jesus said, and Paul said this, this, this unknown God, we declare him to you. Jesus said, the unknown person that you call God, I'm about to tell you what he like. He's not just the unknown God, he's your father. So we don't gotta call him God, we can call him father. He, who he is is revealed to us. So he's not God any longer, he's known to us. Like He's not mystical, Like we know who he is. He's the father. He's the great I am. He is the creator of the entire universe. But God, God is not only the being called the father. That's why God revealed himself as a family. He, God, see in Colossians, the Bible says, and I'm just revelating. So I'm just taking you into my world right now, how I think. So the Bible says in Colossians that there's a mystery of God and the mystery of the Father, and the mystery of Christ. Now the word mystery means a revelation or a hidden wisdom that, that causes curiosity. 
That's where the mystery is. It's a hidden wisdom that causes curiosity, okay? So the hidden wisdoms or the mystery, or there's a secret revelation about God, and then there's a different revelation about the Father. See, I, I understand these things because I asked God what they were and he revealed them to me. So there's a separate revelation about God himself. Then there's a separate revelation about the Father and then a separate revelation about Jesus. So when God revealed himself in different revelation, God revealed himself as a family, a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He revealed himself as a family. So that tells me that God isn't one, God is a family. So when we come into Christ, we, we, are, we are adopted as sons. Like We are not sons, but then we are adopted in as sons. That means that God treat us as part of his family. So God includes us, and this, this is also in Ephesians chapter 3, of who the talk about Jesus is not just Jesus Christ's name is not just Jesus. Do you know that Jesus is not even the son of God's name? Jesus is the father's name. Because Jesus said that I come in my father's name. And in Hebrews it says that Jesus inherited a name from his father. And then Ephesians chapter 3 it tells you that Jesus is the name of the entire family of God. So when we come in the name of Jesus, we come in the name of our inheritance. We come in in the name of our big brother, Jesus Christ, which is the greatest hero, our great, the people's champion. We come in in the name of our father. We come in in the name of the entire kingdom of God. We come in in our family name. It means more than what you think. It's powerful. Okay? So God adopted and is, is in as sons, as gods. That's why I, I, Psalms 82 says, Know you not that you are called gods? Know you not that you are gods? Children of the Most High? So children of gods are really gods. Sons of gods are really gods. We're images of gods. We're small figurines of gods. When God created us, he gave us his nature like. He created us in his image, which is God, and in his likeness, which is godliness, and then gave us his divine nature, which is godliness. So everything about us is supposed to be God. The way we think is supposed to be divine. The way we treat people is supposed to be divine. The way we operate is supposed to be divine. See, Jesus operated just like his father. He said, everything I see my father do, I do the same thing. That's what sons do. Sons operate like their fathers. So sons of God operates like their father, which is God. We're not supposed to be operating like men. That Psalms 82 says, Know you not that you are God's children of the Most High, but you will die like mere men. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 echoes the same thing. Talk about being carnal. He said, if you carnal, aren't you just like mere men? So if I'm being carnal and that's not of God, I'm supposed to be spiritual. But if I'm being carnal and I'm acting like mere men, what does it mean to be spiritual? It means to be a God. Okay? Now, like I said, this is only for sons. Like, this not for religious people. They're like, what you mean? You trying to be God? No. No one can be God. But I'm created just like him. Like, I'm in the God family. I am divine in nature. Like. So my spirit, my spirit being is divine in nature. My spirit man look exactly like Christ. My spirit man is 100% purpose, per perfect. He, my spirit man always want to do the will of God. He knows God. He knows the will of God. There's no misinterpretation. But what the process is developing our soulless realm to yield to the spirit man. Allowing the soulish realm to be cracked and yielded so that the spirit man being can express himself through it like, That's what the process that we have to go through the renewing of the mind the cultivating of desires You know what I'm saying the balancing out of emotions like that's the process Okay, now I said all this 
Now, Jesus was trying to make us free. Jesus was trying to free us from the bondage that caused us not to be able to operate the way that God intended us from the beginning. Okay? Hey, auntie, peace and blessings. Jesus was trying to liberate us from the religiosities, the belief systems, the flesh, the strongholds, the demons, the sickness, the corruption, everything that made us be just mere men like and never ascend to sonship to function like God. Okay? See, this thing is greater than just going to heaven. You in the training ground. While we on earth, we in a training ground like we in the training ground because God have greater assignments for us. See, Jesus is the prototype. He the example. He came to preach to us something. He came to be an illustration of how God deal with us. Like, so Jesus was in a training ground on earth, but he was when he died, he got validated for a greater assignment. He got he got validated for a greater assignment. Like, we know that he died. He was faithful to the death. He was faithful in his training and died to the flesh. And then he resurrected a more glorious, powerful being. And then God gave him a position in heaven. And now he's a million times more effective than he ever was on the earth. But that's how it is for us. It's the same thing. We got to be faithful unto death. We got to let the flesh die. We got to let God process us. And then God, even Jesus said that when you stand before God, if, you are, if you're faithful, then God said that, your reward will be more responsibilities over more cities. Well, how is that so at the judgment day? What is the more cities? What is the more places that he'll give you responsibility over? Some of us going to have responsibility nations on earth. Some have, some is going to get responsibility to manage other planets. Some of us is being groomed to manage planets. This is what Jesus taught. He said, listen, blessed are the meek. Don't you understand that meek is a great quality to, because you'll inherit earths. Jesus said, I'm trying to train you to inherit a whole earth. You feel me? Now, when, now the crazy thing about it is when this planet was first established, it wasn't it wasn't a earth. You understand? It was a planet here filled with water. And then God established earth on this planet. You understand? So it was a planet filled with water and then God established earth on it. And then he sent someone here to govern it. You know how many planets it is? God trying to cultivate us but, but God not giving a planet to He only giving a planet to a son Because he only gonna give the planet to somebody That got his nature That is divine in nature That know how to function like him You feel me? God only giving planets to sons Glory to God Some of us gonna run countries See Heaven is not our final destination See what, what's going to happen is it's going to be heaven and earth as one. But we're going to go to heaven and then heaven going to come down to earth. But heaven and earth going to be one. Right? So people going to be on this planet and it's going to be made new. And we're going to be perfect on this planet. But you're going to look up in the sky where you will, where you will see the sun. You're going to see Jesus on a throne. You're going to look up in the heavens and see the angels. There's no, there's no veil. Like You're going to look up in the sky and see heavens. Some people are going to graduate and be as the angels are. Some people are still going to have an ethereal ministry. They're going to stay in the heavens and be responsible. Some people are going to be responsible over universe, over different suns. Some people got to bring the kingdom to different dimensions. Like This is a training. Like This is a harvest. I was watching a movie, Jupiter's Sun. And they was, they was talking about this, but in a strange way. But I said, babe, it's funny because what they're saying is true. The guy was from another planet. He was like, yo, y'all humans, y'all don't even realize that y'all from another species. Like, y'all was crazy. It's barely true. You feel me? 
me? I said, babe, that's really true. Like, the, the other species that's connected to us is the angels. Like, they sons of God, we sons of God. But they just a different form of son of God from us. They came from another planet. They, they know all about our history because they was before us. Oh, man, I'm revelating. Y'all ain't understand what I'm talking about. This is for sons. This ain't for servants of God. Like, this ain't for church folk. Like, this is for sons. Like, they was, the, the guy said, 